Hey y'all, what is up? Kizby here, and today we're going to be looking at a few more Flanderies replays, but these are going to be really cool because we're actually looking at two different Flanderies mirror matches. So the first match that we're going to look at, I do have to point out, is a bit on the older side. It's actually from pre the new December ban list, but nothing from the ban list really affects how the match goes. No Mystic Mine or anything like that. So I thought it would still be really cool to show off two Flanderies decks built kind of similarly going at it. The second one is more recent, and it is my blind second list going against a hard go first list. So I thought it'd be interesting to show the contrasting deck builds. And also, while it is a much shorter match, there is some cool learning moments in it that I wanted to point out. But before we get into all of that, don't forget to drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel for even more, and if you want to help us out that little bit extra, check out the link in the description to grab yourself a Keys BTCG exclusive playmat. The playmats are custom designed by me for the channel, and everything from those goes a really long way to helping us out. So now, without further ado, let's get into the games. All right, so going into game one, we will be going first on this side. Our opponent is on this side. It looks very similar, so I wanted to clarify. <laughs> Uh, we have open map and Tukan, but fortunately because we have Advent, that gives us enough to go through two M-Pen searches, and with that second M-Pen search, we will ultimately grab Unexplored Winds, giving us an extra draw by shuffling back this Ryza. So, all in all, not bad. So, there's M-Pen number one, which we will always grab Dreaming Town with first, just to make sure. So, with Rubina that we grabbed back, although Rubina didn't get her effect, she just needed to be a body so that we could summon the second M-Pen, grabbing the Unexplored Winds, giving us basically everything we need, and unwittingly setting us up very well for the mirror match. So, we pulled the duality off the top with Unexplored Winds. Unfortunately, the duality flips weren't that great. We'll just grab a Prosperity for next turn, set Dreaming Town, and pass. Our opponent is going to fire off Pot of Duality, revealing to us that we are in the mirror. They will grab the Raigeki. They're going to go ahead and fire it off. They're going to activate their own copy of Unexplored Winds and Map. They're going to activate Map. We're going to activate Dreaming Town. And oh man, this is going to get confusing. We have to use Dreaming Town here because Map is actually going to be too slow. Because they will have to summon and then our Map will have to trigger. This way, we have a monster on the field so that they can't stop our activations with Unexplored Winds by removing our monsters before they can trigger. So they're going to summon Rabina. We're going to summon Eaglin. With the Eaglin, we are going to grab Apex Avion and clear their copy of Unexplored Winds now. So now they're going to go into an Eaglin. Their map is going to trigger because we normal summoned. And our map is now going to trigger. And we're also going to fire off Dreaming Town so that these two don't ever get banished so that they can't act as chain blocks during the turn. You still following? <laughs> we're going to summon Rabina. And they are going to go into M-Pen. So they are actually going to chain block because these two summons happened. One off of Flandery's effect, one off the map effect. So we can't Apex AV on the M-Pen, unfortunately. So they're going to go ahead and banish their copy of Unexplored Winds so they can eventually recover it with Tukan. This Flandery's player knows what they're doing. We're going to go ahead and grab our Tukan back. And with Rubina, we're going to grab a Street and we're going to use that Street to banish out our own copy of M-Pen. Instead of doing that, however, we are just going to go ahead and negate the Tukan with Apex Avion. So we have to, because Apex Avion is an ignition effect, we have to forego using the trigger effect here so that we can negate this and stop them from playing any further. So Apex Avion, negate it. They are going to use Advent to banish out the Tukan for a search, but that is not going to protect it from Apex Avion negating it. So they're going to grab another copy of M-Pen. And fortunately, they will go to the battle phase and start clearing out our field and pass back to us. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fire off our piece Feather Duster first, clearing that off, and we basically are free to win the game from this turn. So with Eaglin, we are going to go ahead and grab Ariza. Both of our M-Pens are already in the graveyard, or banished respectively. And we're going to grab one back, use Unexplored Winds to summon our first M-Pen. And at this point, our opponent is going to go ahead and surrender. Let's take a look at game two. Wow, a lot happened there. <laughs> All right, so going into game two, our opponent is going first. They have almost everything they need. The only thing that would really complete this hand is a small bird. But they have found Pot of Prosperity, so they can dig deeper for the correct small bird. And they have found it, Rabina. They got to pass over the two com because if they did completely miss the prosperity, they can at least advent into a Rubina via sending the Ryza. 
but they didn't have to, so they're going to go Rubina into Eaglin, into Mpen. Mpen's going to allow them to grab Dreaming Town, which I think is the correct move here over map because they can play proactively rather than map just being reactive. We're going to go ahead and fire off Prosperity here. And we are going to grab Unexplored Winds. So we're going to fire off that copy of Unexplored Winds, activate map, and they are going to fire off Dreaming Town here. So we don't know about the Feather Storm, so we're actually going to go ahead and use our map effect to normal summon, foregoing being able to banish an additional small bird to try to rush Mpen onto the field to stop something from triggering and slow down their plays a little bit. So they're going to summon the Eaglin. We're going to summon the Rabina. Kind of confident at this point that whatever the Eaglin is going to ultimately summon, we will just send away with Mpen before it has a chance to trigger. Unfortunately, at this point, our opponent's going to fire off Featherstorm. So, no go. They're going to summon Ryza there. Had they not Featherstormed, we would have sent the Ryza and the Rabina away for the Mpen, and the Ryza would never have triggered, and we would have gotten to continue our plays. But, it is what it is. So with the Ryza, they are going to target the Unexplored Winds and presumably target their own Featherstorm and the Ryza to reset for next turn, but we will surrender at this point because there is no winning from here into that board. Okay, so going into game three, we had a little bit of a connection issue. We don't see our opponent's hand, but we do have the entire game, so no rebuilding alike in the War Rock video, fortunately. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start this game off by firing off Pot of Duality. We are going to go ahead and grab the Anti-Spell Fragrance and go off from there. We're going to fire off map. We are going to summon the Stree and do basic Fonderese plays and ultimately get two M-Pen searches, giving us Dreaming Town and Unexplored Winds. So we'll grab the Eaglin, summon the M-Pen, and with M-Pen's first search, we're going to grab Dreaming Town. Always grab Dreaming Town first. It's the more important one to have. And then we'll go and grab Unexplored Winds with our second M-Pen search. So we're going to set a bunch of stuff and pass to our opponent. We are going to immediately fire off Anti-Spell Fragrance, which is going to eat a Cosmic Cyclone. Something I did mention in the deck profile is that sometimes Anti-Spell Fragrance is really good because it'll eat a Cosmic Cyclone that would have otherwise hit a Dreaming Town or it would have hit a map. Hi, Paris. Welcome to the video. All right, and our opponent is going to banish out the Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds to grab a copy of map. So currently our opponent's hand is map and three unknowns. For those of you wondering why they left Dreaming Town in in the Flanderies matchup, well, there's only so much that we can side out, and it does stop us from going into a double Azaeus if it worked out that way. So they're going to fire a Pot of Duality, and they are going to grab the Lightning Storm. So this is going to force us to use our Dreaming Town early to go into an Apex Avion. We're going to summon the Shree, banish the Mpen for later, and summon Apex Avion. So our opponent's going to fire off Pot of Prosperity. We unfortunately do have to let this resolve because we know about the Lightning Storm. And unfortunately, there's a second Lightning Storm. And a third one! So we know two Lightning Storms at map, and we can assume that the last card in hand is a small bird. So they're going to fire off Lightning Storm. We can also assume that the last bird in hand is probably Rabina. Because if it was a small bird that couldn't self-start, they probably would have banished it to grab a Rabina. So we kind of have to let map resolve here. This way we have Apex Avion to respond later in the turn when they potentially don't have a chain block for the second summon. So with Rubina, they are going to grab a Tukan, and there's the Eaglin that does not have a chain block, so we will Apex Avion there. So they're going to summon the Tukan to grab back the Eaglin and pass back to us. Unfortunately, we have to play into their map with this hand. So we're going to fire off the Rubina, grab Eaglin, their map is going to trigger. So we are going to go into Eaglin, they're going to go into Eaglin, and they're going to grab a Ryza, they're going to summon the Ryza, and we're going to grab our own Ryza. So with the Tukan, they are going to target the Eaglin and the Tukan. Fortunately, the Tukan has already triggered, so we are still going to get that M-Pen back that we wanted. And that's the end of our opponent playing on our turn. So there's our M-Pen, we're going to fire off the M-Pen, and we're going to flip everything face down. We're going to summon Ryza the Mega Monarch here. We're going to make a really dumb misplay here that I'm going to explain in full. 
We put Lightning Storm back on top of the deck. They already have one in hand. We know the rest of the hand is all small birds. And we're going to go to battle. We're going to purposely attack the Tukon to give them a face-up card, thinking that now they can't activate Lightning Storm. Well, we forgot that Tukon can simply change battle positions. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to go into straight, banish the Empen, tribute it all for an Apex Avion because it's good to have here, and pass to our opponent. They're going to go to the battle phase, attack in, and now that their board is clear, they're going to fire off Lightning Storm, and unfortunately, again, we do have to let this resolve, losing the Apex Avion, but if we negated with Apex Avion, we know they have a second one in hand that they're just going to fire off to take care of our map, and we won't have any counterplay for their turn. <sighs> Tukan can switch its battle position, it turns out. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go into our Tukan from here. Remember, it can change its battle position. <laughs> and we're going to grab back our M-Pen. We're going to summon Rabina. They're going to grab Apex Avion. They're going to go into Stree. So we do have enough chain blocks that we don't really have to worry about Apex Avion, unfortunately. So with Rubina, we're going to grab Eaglin. We're going to go into our M-Pen here. They're going to go into Hukan. We're going to use M-Pen to grab a search for Advent. And we're going to go into Rise of the Mega Monarch because really the only thing that they have left to summon is Apex Avion. And we're going to immediately spin it back, protected by all our chain blocks. We're also going to put our Unexplored Winds back on top of the deck while we're at it. Our opponent's going to fire off Advent, and that's going to give them a copy of map. They're going to fire it off and pass back to us. So we are going to fire off Unexplored Winds, and from here, more or less, take the game. We're going to shuffle a couple things back to try to grab back removal. Unfortunately, we don't find anything, and the duality doesn't really give us much either. So we're going to fire off map, banish a map because we don't really have much else to banish. And with the Eaglin, we are going to go ahead and search Ryza and tribute the Rubina away or send the Rubina away before we contribute and go off from here. And our map is funny enough going to trigger because they normal summoned. And funny enough, because they had to attack into our Apex Avion to clear it so that they could Lightning Storm, our opponent has enough life points that we can go for game here. So we're going to put just enough damage on board. And at this point, our opponent will go ahead and surrender. <sighs> okay, through a really bad misplay, we ended up winning that. Just remember that Tukan can change its battle position. All right, so going to game one, I'm on blind second Flanderies. Our opponent, as you can see by the Macrocosmos, is playing a very go first oriented Flanderies deck. This game one isn't really going to be so much for gameplay. Our opponent really did brick very, very badly, no fault of their own. But there is one little interaction that I want to point out. So let's just jump right ahead. They're just going to summon the Eagle and grab an M-Pen. There's not much more they can do, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to fire off D-Shifter here just because. So we're going to fire off Lightning Storm just to clear the back row just in case. Again, I really want to emphasize our opponent bricked really, really, really badly. And this is not any fault of their own. It just, it happens to us all sometimes. So with the Rubina, we're going to grab a Tukan because we're setting up for two M-Pen searches. Uh, we're feeling very comfortable at this point. We're just going to grab Unexplored Winds first because it's going to allow us to get in a little bit of extra damage. And Paris, don't, don't hit the mic stand with your tail, please. Thank you. All right, so from here, we're going to get in for a bunch of damage. Don't headbutt the mic stand either, please. Thank you. And we're going to set Dreaming Town and pass. So this is going to be the interaction that I wanted to point out, and it's very important to keep track of in the mirror match. So our opponent's going to normal summon Rubina, and they're going to activate Eaglin's effect to return to hand. Keep in mind the return to hand effects, as you should already know, are hard ones per turns. So we're going to fire off map in response to normal summon to get our Eaglin. So our opponent's going to normal summon their Eaglin. It's going to trigger. Our Eaglin is going to trigger. And so is our Rubina. So with our Eaglin, we're going to search for Apex Avion, and via Unexplored Winds, we are going to send both the Eaglin and our Eaglin to summon Apex Avion. So we're not going to be able to stop the Eaglin from activating, obviously, because it already did. But what is going to happen here is A, our opponent now only has one monster on the field, so they can't commit a tribute summon. And B, whatever the next small bird is, does not have a chain block to protect it from Apex Avion. Whereas if we sent the Ryza, or the Rubina, sorry, 
we would have given them a chain block and we would not be able to apex AV on their next summon. So they're going to summon the Toucan, going for the Eaglin, and we're going to go ahead and apex AV on it, preventing them from playing any further. And no reason to extend this game any longer than it needs to go. We're just going to go to the battle phase and attack over the Rubina. So let's take a look at game two. Okay, so going into game two, our opponents draw an infinitely better hand this time. They have pretty much everything they could ever need. Our hand lives and dies by Pot of Prosperity and the sixth card off the top of the deck. So they are going to go into some standard Fonderies plays. With the Eaglin, they are going to grab M-Pen. They're going to summon the Rubina, grab Tukan. No reason to grab Barrier Statue here. With the M-Pen, they are going to go ahead and grab Unexplored Winds. So our opponent actually does have access to a second M-Pen search. If they advented away the M-Pen for a Stree, they could have gone Stree, Tukan, M-Pen again, and had both Dreaming Town and Unexplored Winds. They end up not doing that. What they're going to ultimately do is fire off Unexplored Winds and shuffle their last two level one birds back into the deck. So they're going to fire off Pot of Duality here. Unfortunately, they're going to completely miss and not have any small birds to play with on our turn. I do want to take a second to point out, Wing Dragon of Raw Spear Mode is a hilarious side deck option for Flanderese because you can summon it on your opponent's turn with M-Pen. It is one of the funniest disruptions this deck has access to. They can miss that Cosmic Cyclone and pass back to us. So we're fairly certain this is Dreaming Town and we can address it immediately with Cosmic Cyclone. However, we're not going to do that. We're going to go right into the main phase. If that is Dreaming Town and they fire it off, they could go into Apex Avion, which we could eat with the evenly matched, and then have Cosmic Cyclone to hit the map during main phase two. If we Cosmic Cyclone this during the draw phase, if it were Dreaming Town, yes, Dreaming Town is now offline for the turn. However, we could then go into the battle phase evenly matched, and they would be able to then ultimately keep the map. So we're kind of playing around Dreaming Town by not playing around Dreaming Town in a really weird way. So we're going to fire Pot of Prosperity here. And we are going to pass up a copy of Map. So this tells our opponent either we have a really good hand or we have a really bad hand because we grabbed Pot of Duality. So kind of a hint that this isn't Dreaming Town. This would have been the perfect time to fire off Dreaming Town, regardless if we have a good or a bad hand, giving them an Apex Avion to respond with if we already open the map. And then when we try to play with a small bird just off the top, they have their map to go back into Apex Avion, plus unexplored wins for even more interruption. We're going to fire a Pot of Duality here, though, because we need either Rubina or Advent, and there was both. So now we're going to go into the battle phase. At this point, we're almost 100% sure that this is not Dreaming Town. We're going to fire off evenly matched. They are going to keep it. And just to be 100% safe, we're just going to go ahead and Cosmic it out. Again, Dreaming Town cannot be used in the battle phase, only the main phase. So we have to play a little bit low because all we have is Rubina to go with. We're going to go into an M-Pen. And with that M-Pen, we are going to go into Dreaming Town. So we play on our opponent's turn. We're going to set it and pass back to our opponent. So we do know the Dark Ruler no more. And that's the only card that we're aware of. They're going to fire off Advent on Barrier Statue to grab a Rubina. So we're going to make a lot of assumptions about our opponent's hand during this turn, but it's kind of what we have to do from the position we're in. Because our opponent grabbed Rubina directly and didn't grab a copy of Map, we can assume that these two unknown cards are not small birds, because in that case, Map probably would have been the better card to go into. So doing a little bit of guesswork there. It's also possible that they might have other small birds and they didn't want to search map because we could just rise it away. But then if they already had small birds, that would use our Dreaming Town to take out the map. So really ultimately the best assumption that we can make here is because they search Rubina with Advent, they don't have any other small birds. So they are going to go ahead and grab Eaglin. With our Eaglin, we unfortunately have to grab our last target in Apex Avion, and we are going to go directly into Ryza. We're going to go directly into Ryza here without using Rabina because we need that chain block for if they go into Apex Avion here so that we could properly spin it back with Ryza without it getting negated. So our opponent's actually going to go into Snowl. So we're going to spin back the Snowl and our copy of Cosmic Cyclone back to the top. Our opponent's just going to pass back to us. 
So we know our opponent's hand is Eaglin, Rabina, Dark Ruler No More, and two not small birds. We do have a slight problem here though, in that Eaglin is now offline. So we're gonna go into Rabina, we're gonna grab back the Eaglin. With Rabina, we're gonna grab a Stree. With Stree, we're gonna banish the M Pen away. Now we're gonna summon our second copy of M Pen. With that M Pen, we are going to grab Map. And unfortunately, we kind of have to do this a little bit weird because our Eaglin is currently offline, but it's our only small bird left in hand that hasn't used its effect. So we're gonna go into Ryza. We're gonna just put Ryza along with Dreaming Town back into the deck. So now with map, we can resolve Eaglin, whereas before we wouldn't be able to, and we can continue playing. So with Tukam, we're going to go ahead and grab back that M Pen we banished with the Stree. And we will go ahead and summon the M Pen, grab a copy of Unexplored Winds. Again, we're not gonna grab Dreaming Town here because we know three out of five of our opponent's hand and the other two cards we can assume are kind of irrelevant at this point. We're gonna use Dreaming Town. We're actually gonna use the Shuffle Back effect, putting the Ryza back in to keep our Eaglin alive. And we will go ahead and set Cosmic Cyclone and the Advent of Adventure that we drew off the top. So from here, our opponent's going to redraw the Snowl that we stacked on top of the deck. They're gonna go into Eaglin. We're gonna go ahead and activate our copy of map. Again, this is going to come up a second time. Rabina used her once per turn return to hand effect, and there are no other small bird names banished at the moment. So our opponent's going to grab Apex Avion. They're going to summon Rabina. We are going to also summon Rabina, and with our Rabina, we are going to send their Rabina and our own Rabina away for Apex Avion. Funny how in both those games, it was same for same. So now, whatever the next monster they summon is not going to have a chain block, and we'll be able to stop it with Apex Avion. So they're going to summon the Tukan. They don't have a chain block. We're going to go ahead and negate it with Apex Avion. And our opponent will go ahead and pass it back to us. At this point, we will go ahead and wrap up the game fairly quickly. So we're going to go into Stree. Use Stree to banish the M-Pen. Get the Rubina back. Summon Tukan. With Tukan, we're going to grab back the M-Pen. And use Unexplored Winds to completely clear the field. Summon the M-Pen. With the M-Pen, we'll just grab Dreaming Town just in case of anything. And we will go into the battle phase and close out the game. All right, so that was a showcase of two Flanderies mirror matches. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I think the first one had a really, really cool back and forth. I know it was an older build of the deck, but I still thought it was worth showing because it really did have some good interplay. The second one was a little bit more one-sided than I usually like to show, but I think there were a lot of really good learning moments in game two of it, and game one of it did have a nice learning moment as well, so I really wanted to show it as well. Plus to show the contrast between a deck that really is, as you can tell from the Macrocosmos, built specifically to go first, First, and how it compares with a deck that's built specifically to go second. So again, cool little bit of contrast. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for even more, and if you want to help us out that little bit extra, check the link in the description to grab yourself a Keysby TCG exclusive playmat, and I will catch you all later.